And no matter how many times they punch Rocky in the face, he somehow finds a way to overcome and find victory in the end. And if you're like me, you sat through all three of the Lord of the Rings movies. And I'm not just talking the original, I'm talking about the extended four-hour cuts, you know. You sat through all of them. Just knowing that somehow Frodo and Sam were going to take that stupid ring and they were going to get it in that mountain of doom and burn it, right? And that no matter what obstacle that came their way, they, they found a way to solve that problem. But then you know we get in our lives and we think, you know, uh, we, we can't find a sock to get ready for the day. So we're like, how am I going to overcome this? My Indiana Hoosiers yesterday, they, they, they got down 14 to nothing at the beginning of the game. They didn't find any way to come back. <laughs> That's a big problem. And if you, if you can't tell you, I still haven't found a way to, to, to deal with the loss yet. So, uh, But it's really, like, how do they overcome these really big problems in their life? When we watch other people do it, they, they, they make it look easy. But for us, we come to it, we just, we just fall apart. Like, how am I going to overcome this? How am I going to deal with this problem? Well, this passage of Scripture, we're gonna, this story, this is the familiar Bible story that we're going to be studying for the month of September. And it's going to help us answer that question of how do I overcome really big problems? And I'm going to tell you, this is a really, really big problem. So, today we're going to be reading the first Samuel chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. And this is how it reads. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. They were gathered at this one place, which belongs to Judah, and then they camped between this one place and that place, in this one area. Saul and the Israelites gathered, there you go, and they camped in the valley of Elah, and formed ranks against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. With a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, with the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs, and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went before him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to, to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then he will be your servant, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. So, the, the really big problem was not the Philistine army. Now, now any time you have a foreign enemy standing on your soil, that is a problem. Don't get me wrong. That this was a problem that needed to be addressed. But for the Israelites, this was not the really big problem. Matter of fact, they had faced the Philistines just a few chapters prior. And they had defeated them. And not only that, they had faced another army called the Ammonites. And they had defeated them as well. So, you know, yeah, it's a problem that they're facing these other armies. And they're, they're invading the land of Israel. But they dealt with this problem before. And they're going to deal with it again. And it, it's for this reason that God gave them a king. Right? They went to God and said, God, give us a king who will essentially be our champion and stand up and fight for us and lead us into battle. That's essentially the claim they were making before God when they asked God for a king. And God blessed them by anointing Saul to be king over them. And in both against the Ammonites 
And the Philistines in the past, Saul led the people of Israel to victory. So this Philistine army is not a problem. It's, it, 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 well, it's not the big problem. It's, it's, it's a problem, but not the big problem. Now, the really big problem was Goliath. He was a Philistine. And he was nine feet tall. To give you some perspective, this is a ten foot tall ladder. This, this is how tall Goliath could have appeared standing between the two armies. So you can only, you know, I'm, I'm about 6'1. So you can see he, he towers over me. I might still be able to block the shot. But we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a shot. But Goliath is nine feet tall. That's a really big problem. And if that wasn't bad enough, the armor he was wearing weighed 150 pounds. You have to be a pretty big and strong boy to be able to wear 150 pounds worth of armor and still be able to do battle. And Goliath, he was wearing it. You know, he, he, was like, he, was, he was geared up just like a tank. With all the latest and grace of, of battle gear on. And his, his spear, the part that stabbed you, that weighed 15 pounds by itself. Can, can you imagine getting hit by this 15 pound projectile coming from his hand? That, man, devastating. And if those things didn't scare you, that, that didn't want you to keep away from life. There was always that guy standing in front of him holding the shield. He had a shield bearer, right? right? He, that little shield bearer, that you, you get to fear him. I'm kind of joking. Okay. I, I, I just find it really funny. The, the, the guy, this 9 feet tall guy, he's, he's, he's covered in all kinds of battle armor. Yet in front of him stands this guy holding a shield. He's like, all right, all right, black man, I got, I got your knees covered. Ain't nobody taking your knees out, big fella. I'm here. So, so um, shield bearer, he, maybe he's not really that scary, that intimidating, but he was there. He was part of the really big problem. Now, if, if Goliath's appearance didn't scare you, then his attitude would. But he's standing between the two armies, completely unafraid, unthreatened, shouting, Today I defy the armies of Israel. He's shouting, send out somebody to fight me. Between the two of us, we'll settle his good and we will do. Send out your best champion to come. Thank God his shield bearer was there standing in front of him too. 
Here's a really big problem that took a not so bad problem and amplified it. To Saul and the Israelites, this was an impossible problem, one that could not be solved. salvation. 
No, she doesn't tell them to put blinders on and ignore the problem. He doesn't tell them to get a bullhorn and start crying out to, to somebody else to come deal with the problem. Unless he do, he tells them, he tells them all the Christians in the, in the church in Ephesus that put a helmet on. Put on the helmet of salvation. Why? Because you need to protect your mind. Because your mind is going to influence your heart. He tells us that the battle we are going to go into as believers in this world is going to be intense. It's going to be difficult. Do you realize in the Bible it says 365 times do not be afraid? Do you realize that? 365 times it tells us do not be afraid. Why do you think it tells us that? Because there is plenty in this life to be afraid of. There are plenty of things in this life that, are, that, that the fear will use to cripple our minds and steal our heart from us. It's God telling us, be ready because it's living this life and trying to live this life in faithfulness to me in a broken, sinful, dark world is going to be intense. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be a struggle. So put your battle rattle on and make sure you start with your helmet. So that way, if, if you do not, fear doesn't cripple your mind and steal your heart away. that protects our mind is remembering who our champion is. And our champion is Jesus. Jesus, who is the same God that led the Israelites in the Old Testament. Jesus is God in the flesh who came and died and rose again for the forgiveness of our sins. Not just for so we can forgive us in, but so we can be set free from them. Jesus came to show us that he can overcome this world and that through him, you and I can do it too. You see, that's why Samuel, remember when the Israelites come to Samuel, they say, Samuel gets a king. Remember, Samuel, Samuel is upset. He's broken hearted before God. Because he realizes what the Israelites are truly saying. See, the Israelites, they live based on what their eyes see. They see all the nations of the world around them. They see the, 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 the green grass on their lawns. They think, we want to have a green lawn like theirs. So God gives the king to be our champion, to be our voice, to fight for us. Give us a king that we can physically see. And know that he's there taking care of us. Standing up for us and fighting for us. So, Saul, so God sends Samuel out. He tells him, hey, don't, I know it seems like they're rejecting you, but they're really rejecting me. But give them what they want. You see, up until that point, you know why Israel didn't have a champion? You know why Israel didn't need a champion? Because God was their champion. It was God who fought for them each and every time. But when they went to God and asked for a king, they're saying, God, give us a king that we can see. And, who, and how does King Saul describe to them? A man that stood head and shoulders above everybody else. He looked the part. And even in some ways, he had, he had gone out to battle and he had won. And in some ways, he had proved that he had earned that part. But when the time really came and a really big problem like the lion rose up, where did their champion go? He hid it because he's afraid of the shield there. You see, that same God became flesh, came and died on the cross to prove once again that he is our champion. And you and I, if we want to keep, if you want to wear the helmet of salvation, and not lose heart and not lose hold of the faith that we have. We have to make sure we're wearing that helmet. We know that, we, that Jesus loves us, that he died for us, and he has not abandoned us, and he walks each and every step of the way with us. We have to remember that Jesus is our steadfast anchor. The waves are even threatening to 
capsizes and turns us over, but we have an anchor that is steadfast and sure, and that will hold us steady. No matter how intense that storm gets, yeah, the sails might get torn. Yes, some of the boards might get knocked loose. But, the, but when the storm ends and the storm goes away, the boat will still be there. That's who Jesus is. Jesus is your champion. We have to remember that when we're facing the really big problems. You have to remember that no matter what really big problem we face, through Jesus Christ, you and I, we are more than conquerors. You see, so many people, when they talk about Jesus, they say, well, Jesus is just a good moral teacher. Or, you know, he was just a servant of the poor. And those things are true. That's, that's part of what Jesus did while he was here. And those are things that we should be concerned about. But see, when they miss the point about who Jesus really is, that and Jesus says he is much more than that. Jesus came and says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus came and said, I, I, am, I, I, am God, I am the Son of God. I am the Messiah. I am the promised one. He came and said, I am Lord of all. He came and said that there is not one thing in existence that didn't come into being except for me. That's who Jesus says he is. And that Jesus loved you enough to die on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. And that's the same Jesus that says that, that, that no matter what this world throws at you, no matter what problem you face, if you cling to your hope in me, there is no one who can snatch you away from my hand. And we know that by reading the back of the book that the same Jesus is going to come back again. And all this evil that's having its heyday. And, it, and at some point it's going to reach its pinnacle peak. He's going to come back and say, enough is enough. I am here. I'm putting it into you. Jesus is the word of all. And he wins in the end. And that is our hope as Christians. That, that is the hope of our faith. And that's the hope that we have to keep cling to. That's, that's the help of the salvation we have to put on to protect our minds. To, to prevent fear from creeping in and crippling us. I'm not saying that that you know it, that you won't be afraid. Trust me, I have dealt with so many situations in my time in ministry. And each and every time I've dealt with a situation, there is a lot of fear involved. There's a lot of prayer. There's a lot of soul searching. But I know if I don't step up and do what God's called me to do, ain't no way else to do it. But it's not Jason's strength to keep going. I'm not brave. But my God is. I don't have all the answers. But I know the God who created everything. I've never played on a team that's won a championship in any sport whatsoever. I'm no champion. But my Jesus is. I know no matter what problem I face, whether it's a broken marriage, trying to get my family from one side of the country to the other, trying to figure out how to, to point people to Jesus while so much evil is, is being pronounced around us, how, how, to, how to share hope with people when there's so much fear abounding. I don't have that within myself. But I know I cling to the hope in Jesus. Even if, even if it's just the hymn of his garment, that is enough power to sustain me. That's enough power to sustain you. We have to realize that, that, that the, power, the power in Jesus is greater than the fear and greater than any problem we will face. We all know the situation going on in, in Afghanistan right now. And there's a lot of good Christian people there serving in the church. And as everything started to unfold, someone posted on Facebook saying, well, where's, where's your Jesus now? Where's the church at now? And I said, the church is there being the church. Are they afraid? Probably. But 
but they're still telling people about the hope of Jesus because they all they still have breath. That's, that's all that they have left. That's the only thing that's going to get people through the next door. Then I read another post this week saying, well, well, you're on the underground church, so no more. They've all been killed off. But see, that's the mistake we make. We think we're dead. We, we think that church is dead, but in reality, yes, they have ceased to breathe and be alive here, but they are alive with Jesus Christ. They have gone on to the eternal reward. And when he comes back again, they're going to be with the saints that join him in the air to lead him to his victory battle. To the victory that he's assured that he's going to win. They're going to be there to greet us. That's the hope you and I have. And that's the hope nobody can take away from us. And that's the, that is the hope we have to cling to when we face any really big problem. We have to allow that hope to shield our minds and breathe life into our hearts. So how do I overcome a really big problem? Do not allow fear to cripple you. Instead, allow the perfect love of God to cast out fear and His Spirit to empower you to take the next step. Even if that next step is just simply taking a step. Even, even if that next step is simply just taking another breath. Even if that next step is just you waking up the next day, take the next step. And Jesus promises that he will send his spirit to help you. I'm going to put songs at the end here. But I don't want any music. Morning, where's your hope level at? Are you, you have the hope of salvation on I don't know what problems you're facing in, in your life right now. And so some of us you may think, well, my problem is not that big, but to you it is a big problem. And because it's a big problem to you, then it's a big problem to me, it's a big problem to God. And you may be asking yourself, how, how am I going to overcome it? If you're so afraid of making the wrong choice, making the wrong step, that the fear has crippled you and paralyzed you, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is here to give you the power to overcome this one. He's here to give you the power to just simply to move, to simply to blink, to keep going forward. You don't have to be, we have to be bold enough to ask him for his help. Maybe we've allowed fear to cripple us soon. We don't know what to do from here. That the prayer is the same. Jesus, son of, son of David, have mercy on me. And then he will breathe the spirit on you. That's a spirit of power, a spirit of boldness. Power to just keep going. So this morning, all eyes closed and heads bowed. That's you this morning. You're saying, Pastor Jason, I just need some hope this morning. I want you to pray for me. Pray that, pray that I find this hope in Jesus. That you talk, just pray for me. Pastor Jason, I need that hope. Dear God, I thank you that we, no matter what battle we face, no matter what the problem is, whether it's just simply a missing cat to a Goliath, our problems are important to you. That you have not forgotten us, that you have not abandoned us. 
Lord, we may have looked to people in our lives and thought they were the champions that were going to come and save us and set us right again. But what they turned out to be like Saul. Too afraid to move or do anything. God, this morning we realize that you, through Jesus Christ, are our champion. That you have proven time and time again we're faithless, that your love towards us, and that there is nothing that's too impossible for you. But Lord, all that we ask this morning is just for your strength to keep going. Your strength to just take one more step. Your strength, your strength just to take one more breath, to, to blink, to, to, to wake up the next day, God. We're asking for that, for just that. That much courage, that much boldness to be able to achieve that. Knowing whether that is a step in the right direction. God, you have proven yourself faithful to us time and again. Answering other prayers, over helping us overcome every situation. Whatever in this situation we're facing. We ask in boldness that you be faithful to prove yourself to us once again. Help us to put on your home of salvation. Allow that hope 